Alright guys, as promised I told you I'd do a review of Walrus Oil's leather oil uh, and their leather wax. Um, in this video I'm just going to cover these two. I told you I'd do the wood products as well um, and I'll do those in a separate video in the coming weeks. But um, I've used the leather oil uh, on some boots uh, and it's held up really nice. But I haven't used the leather wax and I honestly didn't even know they had a wax. Um, so the guys at Walrus reached out and were kind enough to send me a can. Um, but uh, I'm a fan of the... Uh, cutting board oil, I use it a lot on cutting boards and, and other small wooden goods, um, but uh, I'm not sponsored and this wasn't, although I didn't pay for this, I'm also not being paid to review this. So uh, these are my honest opinions. Uh, it's going to be super just what I'm noticing, what I'm seeing. Obviously I can't apply the product and then um, test it for a month all at once. So uh, I'll give my thoughts later down the road how things are holding up, but this is going to be the initial um, kind of feel, touch, smell application of these products and how they kind of compare to some similar um, high level, high grade um, balms and waxes. Alright, so you can uh, look up the ingredients online uh, to see what's in these. Uh, they're very comparable. I think the wax has uh, myrrh and some vitamin E and shea butter that differs from, from the oil, um, but similar scent. Um, similar product. Um, obviously this is just creating um, more of a wax using that, that shea butter. So uh, we'll kind of try these on, on different types of items. I've got a piece of natural veg tan that's embossed to try and see how it fills kind of the unevenness of the surface. I've got some cheap um, natural veg tan that um, tends to blotch and get kind of gross when you try and condition it because it's not very quality. Uh, so I wanted to see how it held up on this. Then I've got a piece of colored um, uh, chrome tan uh, leather because obviously a lot of bags and, and goods that you have um, from large designers use chrome tan leather. Uh, then I've also got some shoes, really old uh, loafers, some boots that aren't in horrible shape, um, and then a pair of dress shoes. Um, and all the leather quality is kind of different uh, between all these materials, so I think it gives a good representation. So let's try this um, this natural veg tan. Again, this is um, a super low quality, uh, pretty dry piece of veg tan. Um, so let's see, and here's a look at the, uh, the wax. You can see it's a pretty clear color. A lot of the other bombs I use have a yellowish color, which um, doesn't necessarily excite me because I want whatever conditioner I put on the leather to do as little as possible as a way of changing the color um, and also in my opinion changing the smell. The nice thing about this even says it in the description that this is um, lightly scented with clove oil and myrrh. I don't want my leather goods necessarily to smell like much other than leather so I prefer something that doesn't have a super piney and super uh, you know kind of fragrant oily smell because uh, again I, I want to smell the oil or the, the leather rather so just using a uh, cloth to to rub this in and see if uh, what kind of result we get as far as how even it is and the coloration uh, as compared to uh, again that that other balm that I that I typically had been using um, so as you can see first impressions um, it's going on pretty even. It looks pretty pretty good, it's soaking up fairly well. There's some um, skin issues on this actual piece of leather that are darker here, but overall, uh, it's rubbed in pretty well. It's rubbed in pretty even. Let's try it on this uh, embossed and see where we're at. And I'm not gonna spend a crazy amount of time applying this because I wanna um, kinda get an idea of how easy it is to apply. So uh, I'm not going to spend a crazy amount of time trying to get into every little nook and cranny of this embossed leather. Uh, but I'll do the same thing with the other balm so that's, you know, comparable. So as you can see, um, the raised parts of this embossed leather definitely um, are soaking in more so it's a little darker. So we'll give that a few minutes and see how it evens out. This is already evening out even more. Um, the feel right now, it's very uh, very smooth. There's not a lot of grease to it. Um, and again, the smell, which I can't translate through the camera, is, is really neutral. It's really, really light, which I prefer. 
So here we are on a, a piece of finished um, chrome tan. It's obviously not going to soak in at the same rate or level as a as a unfinished piece of, of leather, but again, I think it's important because most of the goods that uh, people are buying at department stores and whatnot are this type of leather, so. can definitely see a nice sheen on it. Uh, there's obviously a layer of protection. It's a lot more obvious um, on a piece of finished leather. So again, we'll give that a few minutes uh, and see what it looks like. I'm gonna apply a coat of this other balm for reference. Again, these balms typically have a yellowish tint to them, uh, which I've found does change the color of the leather a little more. Uh, as well as being a lot more fragrant. And again, uh, I'm gonna do my best to do a pretty quick one over um, on this leather so it's, it's pretty comparable as to when comparing. Um, you can see right off the bat, this, this is the walrus oil. It's definitely a lot uh, lighter. This is the, the other oil that I think is pretty common that a lot of people use, or, or the balm rather. Um, it's, it is darker, so we'll see how it, how it plays out once it's dried a little bit more. Obviously this was applied a few minutes ago, so. Again, same thing on this. I'm not gonna get crazy to apply it in a way that um, you know, I'm getting every little nook and cranny because I want to kind of see uh, how easy it is to apply. Uh, I don't think it's practical that people are going to spend, unless they're creating the goods themselves, that they're going to spend, you know, an hour oiling or waxing uh, one piece of, of leather goods. So, again, as you can see, it's a lot darker, um, even just at the first application. So we'll see how that evens out uh, as it dries. Finally, here's this finished piece. You can see um, this is pretty much dry and it's really smooth. There's no grease, there's no, um, there's no tackiness or resistance as I rub my finger across that. And then with this other balm, let's see what we got. First impression is that uh, the, this balm is a lot thicker, um, so it does have some some buildup that'll probably have to get buffed out. Not that that's a bad thing, um, but this one is definitely a lot more um, even just on first application. Again, once these dry, I'll buff them out and we'll see exactly what it looks like. It's pretty hard to tell, and obviously there's not much purpose uh, in this until they are cured and, and ready to actually be used since the whole purpose is to condition, uh, it's not just aesthetic. So back to these pieces of leather, uh, we have the unfinished um, piece here, we have the embossed piece here, and we have the um, chrome piece here. Let's take a look at this, this, this original piece. So. Um, this is the walrus oil side. This is the, you know, just the other balm um, that I use to, to just kind of compare it to something. Um, overall, uh, I think that you can see that this is a little bit lighter. Uh, as this dried, it definitely lightened up, but this is still overall uh, a lighter coloration change than this side. As far as evenness goes, um, I feel like uh, they're both pretty comparable. They both look pretty good. Uh, this side with the the other other balm uh, is maybe a little blotchier, but again, it, it could just be this part of the leather. So I'm not con convinced that it's necessarily any different, but walrus oil definitely seems to be a little bit lighter. As I smell these, uh, this again has a really neutral smell, uh, which I think will wear really well uh, as you use the leather item. Um, this has much more of an earthy, piney, um, I'm not a, a botanist. I'm not going to tell you what's exactly the smell, but it, it's much more fragrant. Um, I prefer, again, to smell more of the leather items, so I tend to uh, 
lean towards this. It's lighter in coloration, uh, and I think it, it smells less fragrant. Um, so uh, I think Walrus gets the nod on this. This is the piece of embossed that we did. Um, I think with this piece, we're getting we're getting um, pretty even coverage on both. Um, I would say that this side, which is the other balm, this is the walrus oil. I would say that this side um, might be a little less uneven up here. Again, it could be application air. It could be anything. Um, big picture, I'd say they're both pretty even, though um, I would say the walrus does seem to be slightly more even. You can see a channel in here that's a little bit less saturated. Um, so I don't know if that's oils or fats that are just concentrating in certain areas from this balm, but overall, um, this wax definitely seems to, from Walrus, definitely seems to be a little more even. Again, same thing with the smell. Um, I would definitely give this the nod. Um, feel, um, both feel pretty similar. They've both soaked in um, fully. There's nothing tacky or residuey about them. Um, Walrus seems to be a little bit um, glossier to the touch, whereas this is a little rougher. Um, so I, you know, if I'm gonna spend the time to condition something, uh, I guess I would prefer it to be pretty smooth to the touch, um, at least while it's, you know, newly been conditioned. So again, Walrus oil, I think it's a little bit more even. Uh, I'd, li I'd like the smell better, and I do think uh, the feel's a little nicer. So this is a, the piece of chrome. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see what's going on here exactly, but um, the, neither of these have been buffed, um, but this is the walrus and this is the other balm that I used. Um, I'm not seeing what the camera's seeing, so I don't know if you can see it, but the balm is definitely you stacking up and getting thicker um, on the top here which tells me it had a harder time soaking in because this is um, super smooth, super even. Uh, there's not a lot to buff or, or move away. So let's buff it out and see if that helps either of these. So again, there's not much to that walrus oil after buffing it. Um, it's still super clean, still has a super light sheen. Uh, and then let's see what this balm does. After buffing it out, I would say the finish is very comparable. Um, I think uh, even the touch on this finished piece uh, is pretty similar. There's not a huge difference in this. Um, so I think it does depend if you're a consumer or you're a maker. If you're using something like a natural veg tan to um, create and you want to protect it before sending it to a client, again, I do think that the walrus does a better job of um, not changing the smell of the product as much and also not changing the color as much. When it comes to the chrome tan, which is something that a lot of consumers probably have, um, I do think that um, th these are pretty comparable between a, a balm and the walrus oil wax. Touch, feel, all of that. Uh, the main difference, again, that I'm gonna keep harping on because for me personally, I prefer it. Uh, and I do have some friends that agree, so hopefully I'm not just the anomaly. Um, the smell on the walrus oil, to me, uh, is a lot more enjoyable. I can still smell the undertones of the leather, whereas this balm kind of masks that and makes much more, again, of a piney, foresty, woodsy smell. All right, here's a loafer. Uh, this thing's obviously in bad shape. I don't wear these anymore but they were in the closet and I figured, hey, they're worth, uh, worth looking at. So I'm gonna use the leather oil and see uh, what kind of reaction we get on this kind of tore up and dried out leather. Um, you can see the lotion is pretty clear. Uh, it has a slight opaque white type color, uh, but overall it's pretty clear, uh, consistent with that, with that wax that I showed you earlier. When we're first applying this oil on these shoes, it's obviously going to be really dark um, as it tries to soak up all this all this oil. Um, but with that said, these shoes were pretty dark when I bought them. They were pretty rich, bright red. Um, so the fact that they're whitish 
definitely is a testament to the lack of care that I've given them. Probably because they were like $30. I'm going to do half of this shoe uh, just so we can get an idea of kind of final appearance once it, it dries up and cures a little bit to the other side of the shoe. Um, obviously I could just use the other shoe to, to kind of prove the same point, but um, yeah, I think it's easier if you just use the same shoe so you can get an idea of literally uh, exactly um, the difference because Obviously, every shoe is slightly different how it's been worn, what puddles it's moved into, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, this side back here, super washed out, super dry. Um, you can't even put a scratch mark on it. It's so dry. And if I was doing this for um, actually treating my shoes, I'd probably get out a Q-tip and get in some of these uh, areas where the leather's pulled up uh, just to make sure it's been really evenly applied. But for demonstration purposes, uh, I think you get the idea. So I'm gonna let this dry so we can take a look, but obviously at this point, it's very hydrated. Um, it's filled a lot of this this pull up and tear out uh, and dryness in the leather so even this cording which is super frayed and the flesh side is super eaten out after applying the oil it's tightened up the fibers a lot they've gotten a lot smoother uh, and obviously additionally it's pulled back um, moisture and, and, and coloration in the leather let me just get this tongue tongue of the shoe usually doesn't get as beat up because it's protected by these sidewalls. So it's a pretty good um, area to see how well the oil soaks in because it's typically not as dried out and, and beat up as the other parts of the shoe, which are obviously going to soak up uh, a ton of oil. So there we go. That's it. We'll see how it dries and we'll come back and, and take a look. But um, very hydrated. Again, there's no um, tackiness, there's no uh, residue left behind, it's not greasy, so um, it's, it's definitely doing its job in that department. Alright, so I'm also going to do this boot. This boot was oiled, I don't know, maybe a month ago, um, using uh, a balm, actually not an oil, um, and it's held up pretty well. Um, so I just wanted to give you an example of a shoe that maybe isn't as torn out and worn out as, as that loafer. Because obviously, most people that are taking care of their boots um, more than this are, are gonna be doing it a lot more often than that loafer, which again, I've had probably five years and never treated with anything. So this is still soaking in really well. It's a really digestible oil. It's not sitting on the top and, and you know, clunky and, or um, clunky, maybe chunky is a better word. I don't know if there is a good word. Uh, it, it's, it's soaking in really well. There's a section up here that's actually more of a suede um, on the tongue. I'm not going to uh, put anything on that. You definitely could. Uh, I don't necessarily enjoy how dark um, oils make suede, so I'm going to leave that alone, but I am going to put it on this middle part of the tongue that originally when I bought the shoes was, uh, was a natural veg tan color, uh, similar to these samples that we just put the wax on. Obviously it's patinaed into a brown on its own, um, but you can see keeping it oiled definitely adds um, a lot of depth to that. So looks good. Again, we'll see how that goes. Finally, the boot was a pretty affordable boot. The loafer was an extremely affordable loafer. These shoes are not fancy. Um, they look a little fancier, but they are probably a $100 pair of shoes. Uh, does that mean the leather's any nicer? Probably not, because I bought them at a department store. So, uh, But you can see the walls. Uh, the back has all gotten super dry. Um, 
yeah, there's a lot of area that this should be able to, to soak up. This side looks worse, so let's, let's give it a try. So this is so dehydrated um, that it's almost drying immediately. Um, so this might take uh, a few coats before I can really give you an idea of, of where we're at. Uh, you can see on the toe here, uh, it's very eaten out. Uh, it's gotten chunked up and, and whatnot. So uh, I might put some wax on that and see how it, uh, how it does. All right, so again, I'll let these dry. I'll probably put an extra coat or two on this um, just because these were so dehydrated. Um, but while we're at it, let me put a little smidge of this wax on this nose. Okay. With me rambling on, these shoes have um, kind of soaked in, dried up a bit. Um, let's take a look at this loafer first. The loafer, um, as you can see, uh, the the kind of open, roughed out, torn out grain um, for the most part has been sealed up. It's a lot more hydrated. Uh, it's super smooth. Um, it's not. You know, there's, there's, it's not so smooth that it's, it's got a gloss to it, um, but it's smooth in the sense that uh, you can feel it's going to repel and resist a scratch. Here is the um, loafer that I just applied the oil to about, I don't know, five minutes ago. Uh, it's still super hydrated. Um, you can see it's going to end up being a lot more protected than this side that's already pretty much gone. Um, but I did do one yesterday just so we could have some comparison as it dried. Um, and basically this is, is the result. Um, so you're looking at, um, essentially just a much more hydrated shoe. The finish is, is supple. It's soft. Um, it feels oiled. It feels um, conditioned. Uh, it doesn't feel like it still has spots that are that are thirsty. Um, and I also think it does a good job of cleaning up the leather as you rub it off and buff it out. Um, as far as protection goes, obviously that's something uh, that I'd have to test moving forward. I can't give a review on how this holds up because I haven't worn them. And honestly, I probably won't wear these. But these boots and dress shoes, I definitely will. So this boot. It's all dried in. It's all, uh, you can see the tongue, which was very dark, uh, has evened out really nicely. It's super soft. It's super hydrated. Um, there's not a lot of area that I feel that is still thirsty, so it's just distributed really well. Uh, these sides are smooth, closed up. Again, same thing. I don't feel like it's super thirsty for more, like you're gonna have to apply three or four coats. Um, it feels ready to go. It feels like there's, um, you know, enough to keep it protected against whatever it is that you're, you know, some water or uh, whatever else. Obviously, it depends what type of boot you're using. If it's a work boot and you're at a construction site, it's a work boot you in a, in a workshop, or if it's a dress boot and you're going around town. I don't step in puddles in my shop, so my issue is more dirt, things spilling on it, this and that. Uh, someone going around town might be more concerned about water, puddles, this and that. This is actually probably the most um, improved piece and this is like I mentioned a more expensive shoe the leather's probably a nicer piece of leather um, it feels it feels really really nice it feels super hydrated I mentioned that I might have to put an extra coat uh, on this and while I don't think an extra coat would hurt I don't think an extra coat would um, necessarily do much because it definitely feels like uh, it's very well hydrated it feels like the leather soaked it in it feels like um, 
there's there's a layer of protection. It doesn't feel still thirsty, but it also doesn't feel, again, like I said, it doesn't feel like it's sitting on top. It doesn't feel like there's excess or that I have to necessarily buff it out to wear it. Um, obviously, you could, and most people probably would buff it out, but um, you can see it has a pretty nice sheen to it even without buffing it. So um, overall, it's super nice. Again, the smell is nice. It smells like a nice dress shoe as opposed to um, a nice forest or a nice uh, um, whatever else, plants. Um, so I really like that. Overall, I think uh, this did a good job of, um, of getting these shoes uh, back, to, back to a better life. Now, obviously this shoe, this shoe are very old. Uh, this is five or six years old and it was a $30 shoe. You can't expect much from that. This, a little more expensive shoe, also probably five or six years old. Um, definitely a nicer quality and you can see that the oil preferred to be in this leather. Um, this is a more, more new shoe and um, again also one that's been hydrated and conditioned in the last 30 to 60 days. Um, but overall, I think they're all pretty consistently, um, you know, it, good finishes, good protection. So we will um, do another video kind of following up how these wear. Um, I'm actually going to be wearing these a few times this coming week. So I'll, I'll definitely add these in there. And then the work boots I wear pretty often. The loafers, I just threw them in there for kicks. But honestly, I don't wear them. So I'm sure they'll hold up great in my closet or the garbage can after this video. All right, so like I said, I'll do a review of the wood wax and the plant-based wood oil, as well as the cutting board oil that I love and use often um, in a future video. And at that time, I might just plug in kind of how these have worn. Um, obviously, this was from a maker's perspective. I'm not going to have a um, worn idea, but I might go ahead and put some of this on some of the goods that my wife and I carry, uh, just to get a better idea of how they wear and how they handle, uh, and also how they patina with those conditioners on them. Uh, and then the shoes, I'll add in there as well, but like I said, stay tuned. We're going to do a wood oil plant-based, wood wax, and cutting board oil review um, probably in the next couple weeks. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments while you're down there. Hit that subscribe button. I have the website over here uh, at Walrus Soil so that you can order any of these products. If you want to DM us, I got Ronan Witch handle myself and then Walrus Soil's handle up here. Uh, send us a mess message, ask us any questions you want. Um, this cutting board oil, if you're a woodworker and you don't already have this, um, this is a must have. It goes on easy and it finishes so smooth. It's definitely like butter. It's worth it. Uh, the leather oil, the leather wax seems super high quality. I was super impressed just by trying it out here. Um, whether you are a leather collector, uh, a leather maker, or even just a, you know, own leather goods, I definitely think this is worth adding. Uh, once you do buy it, send us a message and let us know what you think. I'm sure you're going to love it, but, uh, we'd love to hear from you.